Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. So, <coughs> let me explain the kind of uh, general structure of the talk. So, so, the main purpose of the talk will be to describe certain conjecture sort of <coughs> within local geometric length and, so, and but the bulk in some sense maybe the biggest part of the talk will be reviewing some what geomet local geometric length is. So oh, geometric <coughs> and uh, and to discuss some uh, applications maybe of this conjecture, correlators of this conjecture, applications and evidence. And I should say from the very beginning, this conjecture, the conjecture, the way I'm going to describe it is essentially, uh, maybe with slightly differently formulated, so it's essentially due to David Gaiotto, to Gaiotto. So my kind of contribution to this is just being able to translate what he says into a slightly, uh, to a slightly more mathematical language. Um, so secretly, Uh, the talk is about uh, computing uh, or realizing explicitly S duality for certain specific boundary conditions or interfaces boundary conditions in, let's say, in uh, 4D and equal 4 super young meals, topologically twisted, I should say, topologically twisted. So, but I'm going to only say these words once here and for, and I'm not going to mention them um, in the rest of the talk for two reasons. One is kind of lack of time and the second is that definitely in this room I'm not the right person to say these words in the first place. So. Um, so, in particular, I should say that the main conjecture when we get to it, so, so, so I mean, David was able to produce it from sort of uh, looking at the setup, and, and the way he was able to produce it is completely, is completely mysterious to me. So, it, it requires some, str some string thread. I mean, the conjecture eventually will be completely mathematical, but, uh, but somehow he's, uh, but, but it will be pretty surprising for experts, and um, he was able to use somehow some kind of string theory arguments to produce this conjecture and, and I really sort of don't understand that at all. Okay, now the actual plan of the talk, of the talk is as follows. So it will be part zero, which will be extremely brief recollection of, so to say, usual local Langlands correspondence. Then uh, there will be part one, which will be sort of brief, but not extremely brief uh, recollection of local geometric Langlands correspondence. And so here, uh, this will come into two disguises. So there will be classical, both classical and quantum, and somehow, uh, sort of, the emphasis will actually be on quantum. And then there will be main conjecture and its corollaries. And then, in the end, some theorems. Okay, that's what I want to try to do. Okay, now let me do part zero. So, 
Well, let's assume that we're given some field k, which is a local non-Archimedean field, for example, periodic numbers, all around power series with coefficients in the finite field, and then usual Langlands, local Langlands correspondence deals with the following thing. So we also need some g, some group g, which is some reductive group. And for the purposes of this talk, you can think about the group GLN, because eventually the main conjecture will be about GLN. And then, uh, so the usual local Langlands deals with irreducible representations of the group G of k. Well, appropriate in the appropriate categories and kind of smooth representation and claims that this is closely related, not, not quite, it's not quite a bijection, but somehow, well, let me make a dotted line here, some kind of very, almost a bijection between these guys and uh, homomorphisms from the Galois group of the algebraic closure, actually separable closure of K if it's positive characteristic of K into G check, which is the Langlands dual group. And again, for the purposes of this talk, uh, you can think about GLN and then the dual group is also GLN group up to conjugacy. And it is well known that there's a kind of a lot of problems with the exact formulation of this. So somehow, first of all, I have to be careful about what you mean by this. And also, even if you formulate this in some way, then somehow it's not quite a bijection. Uh, it's slightly bad, actually, for GLN of a general group, but, but still somehow. So you have to, I mean, there's some, uh, there's some problems with this. And also, it's kind of not a very natural statement from this point, because uh, from this point of view, because somehow here you only talk about the reducible representations, and there's no way in this framework to formulate it for just all representations. For example, if you want to study the category of all representations, then somehow it's, it's, it's probably impossible to realize it on this side. So, uh, and this problem is actually cured in geometric Langlands. So now local geometric Langlands is the following, is about the following. So here I'm going to say what it does and then uh, it will involve some notions which I'll have to, well, if not define, but then at least discuss. Uh, what, uh, what they're about. So the main thing is that first of all, we replace k by, say, Laurent power series with coefficient complex numbers, so any algebraically closed field of characteristic zero. Uh, and then uh, we look at the group uh, g of k, and this is some infinite dimensional in-group scheme. And then, uh, okay, so, um, so the analog of this will be, so, well, here, I'm going to deal with an analog of all representations, not just necessarily reducible representations. And everything, sort of the categorical level of everything will be sort of one. So we, we should move one level up uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the categorification of everything. So somehow here we should look at categories. And then here I'll also discuss in a moment what I mean by categories for the purposes of this talk. Categories with, okay, let me write it strong and also explain what strong means, uh, g of k action. And this should be also closely related. Well, this is actually a two category, and this two category should be more or less the same. And well, there are some problems. Sorry, what I want to say that what I'm doing now is kind of about classical local geometric angles, and then the will also quantum, and the quantum somehow some subtleties which appear here will actually disappear, but the rough structure is that this is more or less the same, and uh, there's actually no correction how, how to make it really precise, as categories, as the two category of categories <coughs> leaving over, uh, well, the stack of local systems. So I'm going to define all the players in a moment. So here, d star is spec of k. This is the formal punctured disk. So let me uh, talk about what, this all, what all these words mean. So first of all, let me look at the left-hand side. Um, so let me explain. <laughs> The meaning of this. So let me do it first, not for the group G of K, but just for. Uh, uh, so suppose that let's say A is some algebraic. Group. Yeah. 
Uh, maybe could you mention what replaces left hand side if on the right hand side you replace you replace disk by curve? Then what happens? No, that's that that's that's a different story. I mean, this you, you don't do that. <laughs> so so and, and um, I don't think there is any sensible statement. Yeah. So. Uh, so he's looking at surface operators. And he's looking at surface operators. And 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 you're reversing right. Absolutely, yes. Uh, absolutely, yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, so, so if I have algebraic group, well, there's a notion of, well, if you just have any group, there's a notion of group acting on a category, which is pretty clear what it means. Now, if you have an algebraic group, there's an action of algebraic group action category, so, and, uh, uh, or algebraic action. And so by a category, so, so first of all, let me just remark is that, well, I'm going to ignore this kind of problem, but basically category usually means some kind of derived category of something. So category will, well, can mean, well, actually, for some application, it will be enough to work with a billion categories, better to work with some kind of triangulated category, or if you want to be really careful, category. So you have to actually work with DG category. But let me, um, this is some, something I'm going to ignore completely in this talk, otherwise somehow I won't, I won't be able to get any, anywhere. And actually the main conjecture when I get it to somehow, <coughs> in the main conjecture we can ignore uh, the subtle, so it will even hold for the corresponding abelian categories, but in principle we should be thinking about categories, some kind of derived category of something. And so if you have an algebraic group, so, so this is an algebraic no notion of al algebraic group acting in a category, which you can easily invent what it means. And so, so algebraic, so in fact, and one way to think about is that algebraic action of A on a category C, it's equivalent, it's this data is equivalent to the action of action of the monoidal category of quasi coherent sheaves on A, which is monoidal with respect to convolution, so the monoidal structure has to do with the group law on C. And uh, so in fact, DG category, if you want we need to work with co-complete DG categories, so DG categories which have arbitrary direct limits. Uh, uh, and uh, mm, mm, so, and well, this is what is actually called, I'm going to call weak action. And a strong action is the following. So intuitively, strong action means it's a weak action such that it is infinitesimally trivialized. And one way to think about it is that uh, str strong action on C is the same as uh, action of the monoidal category of D modules. On C. Uh, is it the same if we make kind of odd cotangent bundle and make DG group? Uh, probably. Yeah, probably. Um, no, actually, I'm not sure. Okay, uh, I can't figure out on the spot, but but but, but somehow it, it means that I mean intuitively you should think about this following way. So what does it mean in action? In action means that if you start with an object, uh, you can make a family of objects over over the group, which which is kind of which forms something like a quasi coherent sheep. And a strong action means that this family uh, will have a flat connection. Yeah, that's. But uh, it will be convenient for me to think about it in in this way because, and maybe for 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 future purposes, let me give you immediately some kind of generalization of this construction. So suppose that you have, now let uh, A tilde be a central extension of A by, let's say, C star. So it fits into a short exact sequence, one C star A tilde uh, A. And uh, then for any complex number, uh, there's a notion, uh, 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 there's a notion of uh, strong A action or a, a tilde action, depends on how it is denoted, uh, of, of on, let's say, on level C. 
And uh, <coughs> this means that, so it's easy to define in this language, so somehow you can consider D modules on A tilde now, but now we can consider D modules with an index C, so it means C twisted D modules, so it means that D modules which sort of have monodromy given by this number C along this. So, <coughs> so it's, it's D modules on the space of A tilde, but which are kind of monodromic with respect to C star with monodromy given by this number, and that's again a monoidal category, and that means that this guy acts on C. And uh, this notion sort of kind of doesn't change if you shift C by an integer. So this two category of categories with a strong action of level C is the same if you shift C by one. Uh, it's the same as differential equations and C's power also this length bound. Yeah. It's, well, yeah, oh, you mean, what, what, what do you mean by this? Well, yeah, yeah it's the same thing, but it's, 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 but it's the same as to say D models on a total space, which, which are kind of monodromic on, with respect to C star with monodromic. But but yeah, it's the same as it's the same as modules over differential operators in the C power of this lambda. So there, so there is such a notion. So it's uh, depends. So sort of depends only on uh, image of C and C on C. Um, okay. Uh, so that's. Well, we don't even need, well, we'll need this guy in a moment when we discuss quantum local angles, but, um, <coughs> but at least somehow now I kind of told you what left-hand side is, so we have to apply it to A being this uh, group G of K, which is an infinite dimensional group in scheme, but, uh, but it's, you know, it's fine, so somehow it can be uh, rigorously defined. Uh, now about the right-hand side, so what I mean by this, uh, so this local system, so <coughs> by this kind of abusing of language. So local systems means the local system in the Ram sense. So this is the stack of, uh, this is a stack of uh, um, the Ram local system. So it's, it's a so stack classifying, let me say, classifying G check bundles on D star with with a connection which is automatically flat. So it's not really an algebraic stack, but again, it's fine. So somehow, what do you mean by categories leaving over there? So let me just say that if S, let's say, as a stack, then uh, there's a notion of category leaving over S. So kind of the most simple-minded uh, uh, example is if S happens to be an affine scheme, so if S is spec of some ring R, then, uh, uh, then life over life of some category C over S is the same as sort of action of the ring R on C, so it means that it, it's, um, it's the same as, by definition, as a map from R to the center of this category. This is the same as action of classical Hirschhoff. Well, yeah, exactly, that, this, this was my next sentence, so that, but, uh, so, and, and that's actually definition in the general case, so in general, life, over S is by definition same as action of the category of quasi kerian sheaves. And again, somehow, since we actually want to live in the, in the world of DG categories, this quasi kerian sheaves should also be written as two in sort of derived sense in a DG, DG sense, but let me ignore all these uh, problems. <coughs> and uh, mm, so now, th th this is a monoidal category just with respect to ordinary tensor product. And uh, uh, so, now, so this is what local language says. So somehow this is not, this is almost true as stated. So in fact, there's, there's some, uh, I mean, but it's not completely true as stated. So th there's actually, uh, so there's a way to slightly change the right hand side due to our ink, and which actually, at least conjecturally, makes it into actual equivalence of two categories. So you can actually formulate a precise mathematical statement. Now, I want to also discuss quantum. Uh, 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 quantum uh, local geometric angles, and uh, 
So I don't know, is it visible if I write here? Or, or I should not write here. Uh, because I want to keep this stuff on the board for some time. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sorry? If you swap those two boards, so the one at the front is at the top, then it won't cast as much of a shadow. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, so, um, um, so quantum local geometric Langlands is the following. So this has to do with the fact that the group G of K comes with a natural central extension. So here you're going to have to be a little bit careful about what the central extensions are prime first by. So in fact, if G is simple, now, uh, so I'll, I'll, if G is simple, then the central extension, then there's kind of one parametric family of central extension. Basically, there's one canonical central extension. If G is not simple, if general, G is general reductive, then in fact, you have more parameters, but I'll kind of notationally pretend that, so <coughs> that there's just one parameter. So in fact, central extensions are parameterized by uh, integral even in, uh, invariant forms on the Lie algebra. So, so maybe notation I'll pretend that the group G is simple, and then we have sort of G hat, which is a central extension of G of K. So again, th this bit, not much choice here. G is simple. If G is not simple, then you have to be a little bit more careful, but let me sort of again, uh, not deal with this right now. Uh, and uh, then mm, quantum <coughs> local <coughs> geometric Langlands <coughs> says something which is kind of more, more symmetric with respect to G and G check. Yeah, and <coughs> Sorry, uh, before I say this, let me just uh, introduce some notation here. So therefore, we can talk about G of K actions on a category on level C, which is a complex number, which is just a special case of what I talked about for over there. And in fact, notation, it will be convenient. So, so it's convenient. So we shift, uh, convenient to shift C by uh, H check which is dual coxter number so by some so we shift them by some integer so which in fact doesn't do much uh, because of the mark over there it doesn't change much but somehow well you'll see that anyhow so for so I want to change the uh, just uh, when I say that level C it means that uh, the action is not uh, by that number by that number was shifted by the dual coxter number <laughs> and uh, you will see why it's important in a moment uh, Mm, well, although this is, no, well, approximately this is not very, very important, but just to be precise, let me do that. So then uh, the statement is that uh, the conjecture says that G of K uh, actions, so let's just say categories with G of K action of level C are really the same as categories with G check of K actions of level minus one over C. So, well, it's kind of an exercise to convince yourself why what's written over there is a special case of what's written here. Namely, so if you want to take C to be equal to zero, then you get, uh, I mean, here to get uh, the left hand side we had originally, it just should put c equal to zero. And then minus one over c becomes infinity. So, what you have to convince yourself is that when you consider this notion of categor categorical action at level equal to infinity, then it's natural to think about it as just being a category living over the stack of local systems. That's I'm not going to do that. I mean, it's kind of not a mathematical statement. It's, it's, uh, 
it's a psychological statement in a sense that somehow sort of you said <laughs> you can should convince yourself that it's natural to think about this as a limit of this as, uh, as, as the level goes to infinity. <laughs> okay, this is all kind of well-known stuff what I'm talking about, and, well, at least to some people. But uh, so the main uh, purpose uh, of this talk will be to provide some examples of it. Yeah, and uh, maybe let me just make a remark that if you define as things carefully, sort of, if you define as categories DG, co complete DG categories with, uh, with this section and so on, then at least if C, if C is not a rational number, then it is expected that the statement that the is true as stated. Otherwise, you need corrections, and particularly, you know, in this kind of zero infinity case, you <laughs> need. Now, maybe uh, say that I mentioned this kind of boundary conditions in uh, Nicole Supriya Mills. I promise not to mention it anymore. Let me mention it one more time, and that will really be the last time. That uh, somehow, uh, if you can see that. This uh, four-dimensional n equal four supreme meals, then <coughs> it's known that it has a P1 worth family of topological twists, which are called Kapustin Witten twists. And if you can set the boundary conditions in this uh, 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 in this Kapustin Witten twists, then uh, boundary condition corresponding to well to the twist uh, given by number C is <coughs> should should be more or less the same as the as this category with G of K action of level C. <coughs> That's that's an expectation. In other words, one other way to say, to say this is that if you have a four-dimensional topological field theory, then to a circle, it's supposed to associate a two-category. And uh, the two-category associated to a circle should be this one. I have a question. Is this question should be kind of algebraic in C or transcendental? So you use complex numbers? Uh, no, algebraic. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, I mean, you can replace complex numbers by any field of characteristic zero here. Is it known that the two monoidal categories are not equivalent? This is just Marie. Uh, which two monoidal categories? Uh, in, in your last thing you oh, you mean uh, the corresponding category of D models? Um, well, it's probably not known that they're not equivalent. Well, I don't know, but uh, I don't think it's known they're not equivalent, but. <laughs> But it's not known that they're equivalent, let me say it like this. <laughs> okay, now let me uh, first uh, do a couple of examples uh, of how this works, uh, or how, it, how this is expected to work. And uh, well, this is kind of too abstract, but let me, uh, uh, I want to work out one example from which you can actually get some kind of equivalences of categories, which you can then test. And, uh, mm, and then I want to, so I, I want to do some, first of all, some kind of known examples, and then I want to explain some examples which come from this uh, Gaiota's argument, which I kind of already completely knew. So, uh, uh, okay, so examples of how this works. Well, let's even forget about Langlands for a moment. Let's talk about how in principle can, can you produce categories with action of A, or maybe with action of A of some level. So, let me write here. So, so how to, how to <coughs> produce categories with a with strong a action or a c action where by c action i mean action of a on level c just for general a well there are kind of two sources of examples and b both will appear so uh, uh, so source number 1 is the following suppose they have some x which is some space i know some Variety or scheme or stack, so well, what's a scheme with a action? Then you can consider the category of G modules on X, and so this has an action of A in a natural way. That's one example. And if you want A sub C, then you need some additional structure in X. So if X has, an, uh, has a line bundle, which is kind of <laughs> equivalent with respect to the corresponding central extension, so if X is equipped 
with a line bundle, just a tilde equivariant, um, then you can consider DC modules on X, so somehow because we're in twisted D modules on X, and here we have sort of, let me just abusing notation, right, we have an action of A sub C. That's one source of, uh, uh, that's kind of a slightly sophisticated source of examples. A uh, less uh, sophisticated, sophisticated source of examples is the following. Uh, so we can just consider, let's consider uh, little a to be the Lie algebra of A. And then we can just consider the category of modules over this Lie algebra. So then we can consider A modules has, the category of A modules has a natural strong A action. And again, if you say have a central extension, then you can see the category of AC modules, uh, uh, which means that it's action, uh, actions over the corresponding central extension on which the central element X by C has a natural strong AC action. So that's, um, uh, that's one source of examples. Well, it's two sources of examples. So let me then uh, do some specific, uh, well, coming back to Langlands, let me give you a few examples of who goes to what or uh, who goes to who. So example one is the following. Example one will be still slightly abstract, uh, but uh, it will be important in order to, uh, you will actually, this example will be important in to get some kind of concrete statements out of, out of uh, Langlois correspondence. Uh, so example one, well, this is what I'm going to say. It's not a theorem, it's an expectation because somehow, because, because this Langlois does not have a construction. It's, it's a conjecture that should exist some kind, of a, some kind of correspondence like this. So somehow we can only guess what kind of properties it should have. So one thing is the following. Let's consider the, the fine grass modern of G. So this is G of K mod G of O, where O is the field of Taylor series. Uh, then it does have a natural line bundle, uh, which is a covariant with respect to X4 and central extension. So we can consider the category of DC modules on the fine grass modern. And that guy, is expected. So let me denote this correspondence as by C going to C check. So if I put check here, it should be actually a category of similar nature. So I should write minus one over C here, uh, modules on the fine grass modern of G check. Um, I'll explain some importance of this result in a moment. Uh, so, again, uh, you're welcome to do an exercise just to, just to think what, what, what this means when C is equal to zero and this guy is equal to infinity. Then we get some kind of interesting statement. But uh, I'll ignore this, uh, so I'll let me keep C in minus one over C finite. Uh, then let me f explain some interesting corollary of this. Corollary is the following that uh, it says that if you consider C, well, it's a category of G of K action, and inside G of K we have the group G of O, and over G of O the central extension always splits. So in this context, it makes sense to consider G of O invariant. So this is the category of G of O equivariant objects. <laughs> At least when working in this, uh, this DG setting, somehow this is all completely well defined. And the corollary is that that guy should be equivalent to this guy. Um, and so why is it so? Well, if you believe in this, in this thing as equivalence of two categories, then it should, well, it should match objects of these two categories, but it should also match morphisms. And so one way to think about this, this is home over G of K from exactly from this guy. to C should maybe put G of KC here. Uh, and uh, 
so if you believe that this thing is an equivalence of two categories, then uh, then uh, uh, then uh, this statement immediately implies this. Although C and C check might be completely different categories, but but if you take their geophoric equivalent objects, you should get the same thing. That's <laughs> so. Therefore, any time we have a statement that two that uh, one category is Langlands dual to some other category, we get automatically also some statement about two categories being equivalent because we can I if we take the geophoric equivalent objects. By the way, we can also replace geophor by Wahori group here, but I won't do it in this talk. So for Wahori, the same is expected, is also expected, but if we consider some smaller subgroups of geophor, then, then it will not be true. Only for geophor and for Wahori, this is true. <laughs> so in particular, it's actually nice to, you can actually do it for, for this, uh, guys themselves, then, then, then we get G models, twisted G models in a fine Grassmannian, which also drew for equivalent on the left, both here and here. And we get actually some non-trivial statement, which is known, but, but, but really non-trivial in this case. Yes. Um, so in the general discussion, you said that C was defined up to an integer. Uh, the Langlands case it's Well, not. it's actually, yeah, it's a good question. But see, you can actually ask this question here. So here, if you change C by an integer, you get, uh, well, get just on the nose the same thing. But uh, the effect of changing C by an integer on m the number minus one over C complete is completely different. So therefore, you get some kind of, and, and this is absolutely non-trivial, so somehow it's very difficult to see it. So, so here you get some, so in particular, this statement implies that, uh, implies some, uh, uh, a lot of equivalences of so these two categories when sort of, you keep, you don't change the group, and they're, they're absolutely non-trivial, I mean, it, more, more knowing them, it's, it's not, knowing this is more or less the same. So somehow it's, I mean, but you're right. You, you, get, you get some really non-trivial sort of equivalences just on one side of Langlands correspondence, and, and uh, it's very difficult to, well, to see that they actually hold. Question: If you want to have equivalence, you probably need some kind of bimodule of equivalence. Absolutely yes, but uh, and the bimodule is just the following. So I mean, I won't write it because I won't use it. You just take. G models on G of K itself, and this has G, two G of K actions on the left and on the right, and then they just apply this Langlands to one, to one of them. I mean, so it's, I mean, yeah, no, no, okay, sure, but, uh, right, sorry. Do these two categories have any extra structure? Like, representations of a group can be tensored or something. Is there like a symmetric middle structure on this? Uh, well, they do have, you know, you, you can tensor them over G of K for, well, no, you can, uh, well, there's a notion of tensoring two categories of G of K, but, but, I mean, I don't think, I don't think this equivalent, I mean, I don't know any structures which should be respected by this equivalence, let me say it like that. Okay, let me proceed because otherwise I won't get, I mean, I have only 20 minutes left. And uh, there's one example. So now I want to uh, do one example uh, of this sort. And, uh, and, uh, and the main thing that I, want, uh, that I want to do eventually will be generalizing that example. So, um, So now it's natural to take C to be this G hat, well, the G, yeah, G hat C modules. This has an action of G of K of level C. And you can ask, what is its dual? And there's an answer, so, well, expected answer. And again, so this expected answer can be tested because I said any time you have a, mm, any time anytime you say one category is dual to another, you, uh, you also get some equivalence of categories like this. Uh, so expected answer is the following. Uh, so um, I consider, so uh, the only thing I always get confused about, yeah, so, so I can see that the group G check of K, and uh, uh, then I consider 
D modules, well, let me write it, and then I'll DC modules on that. Sorry, the D1 over C modules. And then I consider Whittaker of that. So what is Whittaker? Whittaker means the following. So if inside this G check, we have the corresponding, which have some Borel subgroup, and some Borel subgroup, we have the corresponding unipotent radical. And uh, then we can see the, then we, uh, so wheat in general means considering n check of k comma chi equivariant objects uh, uh, where chi is some, well, non-degenerate character of n check of k. So I won't go into what on the gen character means, but in some kind of generic character. So chi is actually, well, it's a character in the sense that it's a homomorphism to the additive group. Mm. So, well, the, the central extension here, well, here what I mean by this is that I do this on the left. And so if you can say just G models and G check of K, it has an action on the left, it has uh, G check action of level one over C. And it's also known that on the right, it has an action of uh, G check of K of level minus one over C. So somehow the levels on the left and on the right are <coughs> negative of each other. So here, when I do this stuff on the left, when I apply this, this kind of equivariance on the left, then on the right, I still have uh, an action of G check of K, which will be of level minus one over C. So at least the sensor makes sense. And this is expected answer. And uh, as a corollary, we get the following statement, which is actually a theorem of uh, Gates, Gore, and Luria. Uh, so let me actually introduce some uh, notation before I let me introduce the notation here. So if one considers, so I want to consider the category of uh, GC <laughs> modules, and then I, I want to consider here uh, G of O equivalent objects, and otherwise it's modules over this, sorry, a finely algebra, which are integrable with respect to G of O, in which the gr this group acts, and this has a, this is sometimes called the kajdan lustig category of G-check level C because it was started by Kajdan and Lustig. And Kajdan and Lustig actually, uh, uh, well, they introduced some tensor structure here and uh, actually as a tensor category. So let me assume that for, for simplicity G is simple and let's say simply laced. Otherwise you have to be a little bit careful about uh, how I formulate it. Then Kajdan and Lustig constructed an equivalence of this. Well, for, G, for almost all C, so well, let me just say that it is equivalent to the uh, category of finite dimensional representations of the corresponding quantum group, finite dimensional quantum group, not defined, where Q is e to the power 2 pi i over C. And here we have to exclude some C, so, so maybe you should write that C is not uh, a positive or non negative rational number for any, for any C, which is not like this. This is going to work. And, uh, um, and so, so the core I want to format, I want to take here this geo of equivalent object. So here, by definition, I get this casual lustig category. Sorry, this is modules. So I get this casual lustig. So this is this is called casual lustig equivalence. Uh, so if I take the casual lustig category of level C, uh, then uh, this thing is, should be the same as, uh, uh, well, and the equivalence is also, well, fr I mean, for this I have to, for this to work nicely, I have to make some assumptions on C, like best assumption to assume this. But I think this equivalence I'm going to say right now actually works uh, always. Mm. If you format it precisely, so here I should write, sorry, I should write wheat, and so here I should write DC, sorry, D minus D1 one over C modules, 
And I should take geophoric variant objects here, but that's the same as to just consider G models on this affine Grassmannian, which is G of K mod G of all. So if you can see the Whitaker G models on the affine Grassmannian, uh, that's the same as cash down Lewis category for the dual group as if C is if C and one over C, if, if, if the levels are matched in this way. So that's actually a theorem in this case. I guess, well, at least it's written maybe if C is not rational, for rational somehow this, some, uh, it's more delicate, but I think it's proved at least when C is not rational. With C is rational, sorry. When, I mean, it's, it's proved, I think, in full generality, but written maybe only for irrational C. Okay, so, um, and, um, and again, physicists, I have some, I think, have some uh, ways to explain why I should expect, why this is the, actually the right expected answer. And so, uh, in the remaining 12 minutes, I want to generalize this. So, what, so, uh, so, so what I want is to slightly actually generalize this. And uh, <coughs> for this, I need to uh, slightly generalize uh, uh, actually this part of the board. So, I mean, I said that somehow here, one way to construct uh, uh, categories with this action of, the, of my group is just to consider the modules over the Lie algebra. Now, I want to do something a little bit more general than that. And, and again, from, it turns out that from the 4D Young Mills uh, uh, point of view, it's also natural to do that. <coughs> Let me do the following. Let me assume. So assume that we are given a Lie super algebra. Let me call it. Maybe it's a bad notation, but I wasn't come up with anything with any other notation. G prime. So G prime is. G prime zero plus G prime one, and such that G prime zero is my G. Uh, then I can try to play the same game. I can, can try to consider corresponding loop algebra. So I can consider G prime, and I can consider its central extension if it's sufficiently nice super algebra. And uh, well, let me also put number C here. Well, you have to be, again, a little bit careful by but by what the central extensions are parameterized, but again, let me ignore this. But you can consider just modules over this super algebra. And this category has an action of, well, let me write it, G hat of, sorry, group G of K of level C. And so idea, uh, uh, that if G prime is some nice super algebra, for example, if it's a simple super algebra in some sense, and uh, then uh, this long class dual guy. Uh, should be computable. Let me say it should be computable. Should, there should be some explicit answer about what this thing is. And if one reads carefully the paper of Gayot and Wittern from 10 years ago, then apparently there's actually an answer there for all, for at least for all classical superalgebras. There's probably an answer. But uh, today I'm going to concentrate on the simplest possible example. And uh, the simple possible example is the following, and it's already pretty interesting. And again, for people working in geometric Langlands, somehow it was completely unexpected that you could do what I'm going to say in a moment. So I want to take this G prime to be GL n slash m. So now what me it means is that my group G is GLN cross GLM. It's also the same as G check in this case. And I want to compute, so I want to formulate an answer about what the Langlands dual is. 
And uh, this will imply some equivalence of categories, as, as I explained, by if we take this corresponding geophoic variant. Before you have a, a the algebra was simply dimensional, was Kasmuri. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, I said that, so here I start, suppose I have, so I'm saying that here, suppose that my finite dimensional algebra has some super extension, then I can consider, then I can consider finization of that. <laughs> so in particular, there will be a statement that the cash um, dan category for the least super algebra GLN M will have some kind of realization. So the question, so now, so I take this GLN M hat C modules, and I ask, what is its Langlands goal when I dualize it with respect to both GLN and GLM? This is, by the way, also what physicists would call interface between, between sort of young meals for GLN and young meals for GLM. I mean, that's an example of an interface. Okay, let me produce an answer. Now, and this answer is supposed to generalize this one. So this is the case. Uh, well, if G is GLM, then particular, uh, th this, is, this is a special case corresponding to say M equal to zero. So, well, first of all, I'm going to assume that N is greater or equal than M. I mean, everything's symmetric with respect to N and M, so I can do that. And uh, 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 so somehow the easiest answer will be in the case when M is equal to N minus one for some reason. So, uh, okay, so the structure of the answer will be the following. It will be, there will be one type of answer when M is strictly less than N and slightly different answer when, M, when, they're, when they're, they're equal. So uh, let me first do the case M less than N and uh, uh, it should generalize this, but I first do the case M equal to N minus one and it will not look like this at all. But then I will do the general M less than N case and, and it will be clear how it includes this one. So, mm, Okay, so for example, m equal to n minus one. So again, let me do this for. Uh, so then, the answer is d modules, well, of level minus one over c. Sorry, minus uh, yeah, minus one over c of on just GLN, but consider as what? So somehow this has GLN of K, GLN K action on oh, GLN of K on the right. And on the left, it also has GLN of K action. Well, I'm ignoring the levels now, but I'm kind of ignoring that. I'm uh, uh, And I'm just, uh, so I can, naturally embed GLN minus one into GLN. Let's choose this embedding in a natural way. And then on the left, I consider GLN minus one K action on the left. So on the left, there's also full GLN K action, but I just, I just ignore that and I only consider the action of that guy. So, um, so the claim is that then these two guys are supposed to be, uh, 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 well, sorry, I don't need minus here. Sorry, that's just one of C. Because the, the minus will come because you can see the GLN key on the right. Uh, uh, so, but this is the Langlois dual, so in particular corollary, well, well, this is not a mathematical conjecture because we don't know what we don't know a construction of Langlands correspondence, but the conjecture becomes completely mathematical. Is that uh, the cash dan category of level C for GLN slash M uh, is equivalent hat is equivalent to well, I should take here objects which are uh, equivalent with respect to GLN of, of O on the right and GLN minus one of O on, on the left. So somehow one way to think about this is that, so let me write D minus one over C modules. And here I should take the affine Grassmannian of GLN. So this is taking quotient by GLN of O on the right. And I should on the left also quotient by GLN minus one of O. 
So in other words, I can see the g ln minus y. So usually wh when people do geometric satake, you would consider just g ln, g ln of all equivalent objects here. But here you can see the equivalence vector of a smaller group, and the, cl and the claim is that, uh, sorry, this is m equal to n minus 1. This is n minus 1. So this, this should be an equivalence like this. OK, so I have three minutes left. So I probably won't be able to discuss uh, any theorems, but let me still finish the formulation. So I should say that, again, the formulation of this is uh, essentially due to Gaiota. In fact, well, he didn't, of course, format it this, way, this particular way, but, uh, but somehow basically 99.9% 99 of the formulation is due to him. Uh, so uh, <laughs> my only contribution is being able just to translate it to some kind of mathematical language. Okay, now let me do the general case. So let me do the general n less than m example. So, so, so m, sorry, less than n general. Uh, then the statement is that what it should do is the following. Then if you consider this gl n slash m hat c modules, and if you consider it's Langland's dual with respect to GLN times GLM, that thing should be equivalent to the following. So now you should do the uh, you should um, if you consider D modules on of level one over C on GLM K. And now you should consider it's with a reduction with respect to GL n minus m with respect to any important group in gln minus m. So the two extremal cases, one is when this number is equal to 1, then, then you have gl1 here, and the important group is trivial, so you don't do anything. And th that's, that's what we did before. Another example is when you consider m equal to 0, then I should consider the full uh, Whitaker here, and that's, and that's the theorem up there. So, uh, well, no, I mean, that's, that's the thing up there. So, but I mean, the theorem becomes if you, so in particular, GLM O times GLM O equivalent objects, the categories of GLM objects should be equivalent. There's also an interesting case when one of these numbers is equal to zero and the other is equal to infinity. Actually, when this number is equal to zero and this is equal to infinity, then it should also, this equivalence should also hold. And uh, now maybe let me conclude with a few things. So first of all, it, the equivalence up there, it's known that it actually holds in all of abelian categories. You don't need any derived categories. And the same thing should be true here. Oh, uh, one other thing is that let me also say what happens when n is equal to n. If n is equal to n, then we have here gln n hat c modules. And if I Langlands dualize it, then the answer is similar but slightly different. And the answer is that I should consider d1 over c modules on the following thing. I should consider gln of k times k to the n. And so here, this has two actions of gln of k now. One is just, say, the left action just on GLN of k itself. And the other is the following. So I have the right action on GLN of k. And I ha also have the action of GLN of k on k to the n. And I can see the diagonal one. So, if, so, so I can see these two actions. And again, if I take GLN of O times GLN of O equivalent objects, I get some equivalence of categories. And so uh, maybe if I have, can I have two more minutes, uh, let me make a few remarks about this and formulate, just tell you a few cases when this is known. So first of all, I should, uh, uh, one thing I want to say is that I never, until recently, kind of psychologically, I never admitted that the importance of, I never acknowledged the importance of loose algebras, so to say. But th that's kind of the first time in my life when something in loose algebras plays some kind of role. And uh, now when, uh, uh, when 
uh, when I understood the formulation of these conjectures, then I started kind of researching both literature and, starting ask, uh, and asking experts, and it turned out that this, for example, this cajun lustig category for, uh, for Lee superalgebras has never actually been studied. Although there are like a lot of people who study representations of Lee superalgebras, but there's no, for example, analog of cajun lustig well, not that there's no analog, there's no known analog of cajun lustig equivalence for, the, for this. I mean, nobody, uh, although, I mean, there's no obstruction here, it's ju it just nobody has ever proved it. So, so I think that it might, it might actually be, sort of a good thesis problem to generalize cajun linguistic equivalence to some kind of least super algebra like that. I mean, I think, I think it should be relatively straightforward, but, but somehow nobody has ever done this. So, mm, so remarks. The corresponding equivalence, so if you can see the uh, G, GLM of O times GLM of O equivalent, equivalent object, equivalence, should hold for abelian categories. This is not something coming from a general, from any general expectations, but it's just a fact. But it, I mean, I mean, if you have look, work with examples, you see that that should be true. Also, in this case, this. Again, I'm talking about GLN of O times GLN of O equivalent objects. Somehow the corresponding categories, they're not just categories, but they can, what's called factorization categories. So also should be equivalence of factorization categories. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to say is that there are a few known cases. The first known case, which is relatively easy, but not completely straightforward. So the first case is when n is equal to m is equal to 1. So you can set GL1, 1. It's not completely trivial in this case. So this is known, except that I don't know how to prove at the moment that it's going to factorization categories. So I can't, I, because when equivalence of categories, I can check, but not, not, with, factor, not with factorization structure. And by the way, I can also check the corresponding cajun lustig equivalence in, the, in this case. So we can say the cajun lustig category for GL11, it's equivalent to representations of the corresponding quantum. We can define the corresponding quantum group, and we can check that they're equivalent. <laughs> so that's one thing. The, uh, the other thing is that when n is equal to 2, m is equal to 1, and c is equal to infinity, 1 over c is equal to 0. That's also, well, in this case, by the way, the super algebra degenerates to something much simpler. But still, in this case, it's known. And it's, it's written in a, a recent paper of myself with Finkelberg, where it was studied for completely different reasons. In fact, <laughs> funny, enough, funny enough, it was also kind of an attempt to mathematically confirm certain conjecture of Gaiota, but a completely different conjecture of Gaiota. I don't see any relation between these two conjectures. So, so but, uh, and it, it's not, I mean, this is actually not very easy. I mean, it's, it's not super difficult, but, mm. and uh, the other thing is that independently before even this whole conjectures were formulated, uh, 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 Finkelberg Ginsburg and Trafkin started the case n equal to n, and uh, again c equal to infinity one over c equal to zero. And they actually, will f and they actually formulated the right conjecture in this way. So I never actually formulated carefully what the conjecture says then in, the, uh, uh, in this uh, in this limit, but that's easy to do. And uh, so they formulated the right conjecture. And so recently, just a few weeks ago, Trafkin told me that he thinks he can, he can prove this. So probably And I think that's the full list of known cases uh, right now, at least known to me. And uh, maybe I will conclude by saying that you indeed can actually GLNM as just an example. So just for any classical Lee super algebra, there's an analog of the statement, but that's just, that's just as simple as possible. OK, thank you. Maybe what's, a, what's a factorization category? 
Well, it's uh, uh, it's uh, uh, form. It's a ca it means that it's uh, it's it's a following structure. It means that it's a category. It means that if you have a, any algebraic curve and any power of an algebraic curve, then you have a category leaving uh, sort of which leaves over any any power of any algebraic curves and, and with some compatibilities between, between these. And so the, the original category is the fiber. If it, you consider just just first power of the curve, then you consider the fiber of that over a point, then this is your original category. So it's a, if things are kind of finite, finite enough, then that thing is the same as a, as a tensor structure in the category. But, but, so but you have kind of a resource actually you have to put into your curve. Right, right. No, I'm saying that there should become some compatibility. It means that somehow if you have maps between curves, then somehow everything should be, yeah, yeah sure. sure. Yeah. So the, the, there is such, no, I mean, this notion kind of, when you do this geometric language stuff, this, this is an extremely basic notion. And so, so for example, this equivalence of gates Gurry, and Lurie, it's actually an equivalence of factorization. It's kind of trying to be an equivalence of tensor categories, but I mean, and they actually are, I mean, I mean, Kajan and Lustig, they actually define a tensor structure on this Kajan and Lustig category, but the tensor structure is kind of transcendental because if to define this tensor structure, you have to at some point compute monodrome or certain connection. So sort of in algebraic world, it doesn't exist. What does exist in algebraic world is this factorization structure. And so this, both of these, if, if you know what factorization structure is, then both of these categories have a factorization structure on the nose. And the claim is that it's in the of factorization categories, which is actually a much Stronger statement just in terms of categories. So I mean, uh, it's really kind of more difficult to prove this in terms of factorization categories than than it's in terms of, ca of categories. And so this equivalence is really very basic for local geometric language. So so Gaisger calls fundamental local equivalence, and it's, so it has a precise formulation of what ge local geometric language should do, and it's based on that equivalence. So, so you mentioned, sorry, maybe I'm just asking a physics question, but uh, so you mentioned that the, this N and M are the Lanco gauge group. Okay? Yes. Between, uh, I mean, uh, two, two different gauge group with interface. Right? Yeah, but that's the same. I mean, it's kind of the same as the boundary condition for the product. Inter interface, interface between two gauge groups uh, is the same. It's the same. It's the same as the boundary condition for uh, for gauge theory when the gauge group is the product of two gauge groups. So. Yes. Uh, so and so. So the point is that if you uh, just, I mean, where do least super algebras appear from this point of view? So somehow, if you want to, if you want to live where at the level being infinity, so you ask yourself, when can you construct naturally boundary conditions? So somehow, the claim is that if you start with the representation of of your group, of your gauge group, then you can construct a boundary condition at, at this topological for this topologically twisted theory at infinity. This you can do for any representation. Now you can ask, what does it take to uh, to, to sort of extend this boundary condition to this P1 family of topological twists. Now the claim is that the structure you need is the, uh, so if you start with uh, G and the representation, then you can consider Lie algebra plus V. And so again, this just gives you boundary condition to infinity, but if you want this boundary condition to live everywhere, then you need to extend this to a, a Lie super algebra structure on, the, on, the, on this sum. So any so any time you have a least superalgebra structure on this, it defines a boundary condition for any point of P1. And so and so this is just kind of the easiest least superalgebra you can consider. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when m equal to n, uh, so it's just uh, the product of the same theorem, and then you just consider boundary condition. No, no, it's a boundary condition for the product of GLN times GLN. So it's an interface between GLN and GLN. And so, and actually, for in the physics argument, that's actually the most basic example. So somehow, well, again, I won't be able to repeat this. So somehow, this really requires some kind of uh, string theory arguments. But no, it, I mean, the question is, where do you get this from? I mean, how do you know that the S dual of this boundary condition is given by this? So, so David has this kind of argument with you know brain construction of all of that, and then, uh, and and so, so for him, it's a kind of natural statement, and uh, but. I don't see any kind of mathematical. I, I can form it mathematically what he says, but uh, uh, what, what I can form it mathematically the, the, the eventual statement, but I cannot form it his arguments mathematically, even even, even approximately.